Hi everybody, this is Steve on the Guru Brew. Today we're going to talk about the Raspberry Pi again. The Raspberry Pi is that $35 computer that's about the size of a business or a credit card. And it's a nice little computer and it's got plenty of power packed in there. And it's made so that um, people that like to experiment with computers like myself can uh, do different things with it and access the outside world through these pins. So if you missed our video last time, I'm going to put a link right up here and you can watch us unbox it. It took about two months to get it in the mail and it was on back order and then we made an SDOS card for it and that's all explained if you just watch that link. Well, today I have all the cables and we should be able to boot it up and play with it some more and decide what we're going to make with this Raspberry Pi. So if you're ready, let's get started. Well, here's the Raspberry Pi the way I left it from last time. I've hooked some things up. The main part that I was missing last time is this. Uh, this is a Travelocity USB transformer. This one's rated for 5 volts at 2 amps out or 200 or 2000 milliamp. So that'll be just great because the Raspberry Pi requires at least uh, 700 milliamps. And then to plug this in, I have this USB to all these different ends, and I found an end that works. Seems to work with the cell phone end on it. So I'm just going to plug this into here. And then this will go into the plug when we're ready to go here. Uh, this end was also a little tough to find. That is an HDMI plug. The cable was about $12 and then I had to go to a DVI end because I didn't have a monitor that was HDMI. So I had to get one of these ends here and the end is in the back side of the monitor. Maybe you can see it right there. And the adapter was the adapter was like 17 bucks, so that wasn't real cheap. But luckily you can go DVI to HDMI or HDMI to DVI, but you can't use the audio. You have to come up with a new audio source. Picked up this little speaker. The speaker was also purchased from Big Lots. It has a built-in battery that you can charge. And we'll turn this on here. On. This little thing was only like eight bucks. He can open it up and it helps the bass. Plug it in right here on the audio. And then of course I have my USB mouse and my USB keyboard. And I will be switching that over to wireless, but for now I'm not sure about the driver, so we're just gonna go with the way it is here. So everything's hooked up except for my Ethernet. I'll get that over here in just a minute. Let's go ahead and plug this in. Now, this is a Virgin card inside here. It means it hasn't been run yet. It's still the same one that we burned. And what has to happen is we have to configure it after the computer starts the first time in using the Linux commands. And I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So let's go ahead and uh, Power this thing up by plugging it in. If you're not used to Linux, a lot of these commands are going to look quite different. And it's not that hard as long as you take the information in small bites and learn it that way. Now, Linux is traditionally done with a line interface, which means there's no GUI, it, it's not fancy, it just looks like DOS commands. Uh, but there are things called GUIs, and I'll show you what one of those look like. Now, when you get to this screen here, 
I'm sorry if this looks a little bit uh, fuzzy to you. I'll try to be as still as I can. Um, this is the screen before you can actually log into the Raspberry Pi. And there's one thing on here that should concern you. And it's the second item here. And if I use my arrow key down, this one right here, it says expand root FS. And what this does is it expands the root partitions to fill the SD card up. So right now, the SD card, even though this SD card, I'm using a 16 meg, or I'm sorry, 16 gigabyte. Um, the free space isn't going to be that large because it's still hooked to the allocation table. So what this little application does is it releases it so we're able to use that extra room. So this should be one of the very first things that you do when you boot your Pi for the first time. So I'm on that and also you know there's other things in here you can set to. This is how you can overclock it. Um, you can change the behavior of the boot and you can read what these different things do. But uh, the main thing right now is to expand this uh, root FS and that's what I'm going to do now. Okay, I have a message here. It just took a second, as you've seen. It looked like some DOS commands came through here. And uh, it says it's resized, but to finish the resizing, I have to uh, click the OK button. And this is going to take some time um, because what you have to do is you have to finish and reboot. And I'm going to allow it to happen now. And when it starts to reboot, that's when it's going to um, resize the actual file system. So we'll see how long that takes. You can see the commands there on the bottom now that all the chips and everything and the devices are found. It's resizing the card right now and that's what it's saying down there at the bottom where it's, it's mounted the card and then it's resizing the blocks on the card. So depending on the size of your card, this can take a while. As you can see, the sizing is finished. It took approximately about 16 minutes. So that's about one minute per gig because I have a 16 gig card. So the next prompt, it's asking me for the Raspberry login. And when you first start these up, if you don't change it out, um, the login is PI, P-I. Enter. and the password on it is raspberry Enter. and when you're typing the password the characters don't echo and then you'll pre be presented with this prompt that looks like uh, a dollar sign um, that's waiting for the command the Linux is now running and you can use it as is or we can start something called a GUI and the GUI turns it into a pretty Windows interface that most of us can understand. To get into the GUI we can type in the word start with an X. Start X. there it's loading now it looks much like a Windows machine there are some very strong differences though it does have a, a start button right here and this is what it looks like you know like file manager you'll see some things in here that uh, look familiar if you're not used to a Linux that Windows uses here's our internet here so the GUI is very easy to figure out um, if you want to use the command line you can always come back here and run it as a root terminal here 
and then you'll get something that looks like a DOS prompt and that's ready for Linux commands let's um, hook the internet up here and see what happens okay I'm gonna go ahead and plug this in and these status lights on here show us that we've connected to the LAN and another one is for the transmit the receive and shows 100 megabits per second to access the internet on on these sort of machines um, if we come down here into the GUI they give us several different things underneath this internet and they're not going to be called the Internet Explorer of course but uh, here's their versions of the internet Just trying to get us to a familiar page. There we go. So we are on the internet now. There was no configuration. You've seen what I did. I just plugged into the uh, net card here. It, uh, it took right off. Now something that is different about the Linux distribution of this Debulin, the Wheezy, um, you're not going to get flash and flash is used in YouTube um, to play the videos so we're going to have to convert to HTML5 and that's another matter in itself but uh, you can see um, the pages themselves look perfectly normal now there is another version there's actually other a lot of other versions of Linux that you can run with the Raspberry Pi and I did uh, prepare one more and it's called the Media Center and it's based on um, it's based on uh, Microsoft Xbox's Media Center that they use on the Xbox I've seen let's um, load that up now and see what we get that's the nice thing about uh, using these cards if you want to change out the operating system all you have to do is you know, switch out the card and I made this card the same way that I made the other one um, on that first video where I went to the website and I downloaded all those tools well I just did the same thing on this one just look up media center for raspberry pi and google and you'll find it okay I just put my other card in there Plug it in. This is called Open Elect, and if you look up openelect.org, I believe it is, that's where you can download it from. Now, this is a stripped down version of Linux, and it's just mainly the media center, so they've taken all the command props and that sort of thing out of here. So, if you are wanting to put this in a case and turn it into, um, you know, a television, um, this would be one way that you could do it. There are several different versions of this media center, but um, once you get to the raw insides of it, it all looks the same. It's just different on the wrapper itself. So here's the media center coming up now. You can see it's called XBMC, Xbox Media Center and um, it works just like you'd expect you've got your weather pictures video um, let's try the video add-on we're gonna see if we can uh, go to YouTube here and look at one of my videos search I'm going to search for uh, Guru Brew with the word hard drive because I know I did some hard drive videos just so I can show you something here. Let me 
make sure my little speaker's on. And as far as heat goes, um, this chip does get a little bit hot, but it's nothing excessive at all. You can see the search is starting to come up now, and there's some thumbnails of the uh, different videos that I have the word hard drive in. I'll check this one here. And we have noticed the longer that you run this um, media center, the faster it gets. When it first starts up, it does tend to go a little slow. I think it's partially because um, it's downloading and updating things as well as caching. So you can see where it took a little bit of lag there at the beginning, but now it's straightened itself out. The quality on this monitor looks fantastic. I know that it's probably not real obvious with this camera on the screen, but it is quite nice. So it does quite well. And that might be a project for us with a universal remote control. Something we can do in the future, hooking it up to the television for our media center. And there is live video feature on here that you can use as well. Okay, so we picked up some parts. Here's the next step of using this little uh, Raspberry Pi here. Uh, we picked up a bunch of LEDs here. We've got some resistors, a breadboard, we've got some switches and jumper wires. We've got all our little parts and we're going to start experimenting by using these input-output um, pins on the device itself. So, if you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss any of these videos. We've got some really interesting projects coming up and we'd like to uh, get your input as far as what we should and shouldn't do. I want to throw some ideas by you, so hang tight and uh, we'll talk more about it in the next video. We'll see you. Have a good day. Hey guys, this is Steve. Thanks for watching. Hey, don't forget to subscribe if you like this video and be sure to rate and comment. See ya.